night, coffee beans. How's it brewing? Welcome to the fourth and final episode of Bunny DIY Spoopy Edition Season 2. Look, it took me four episodes. I finally nailed the intro. <laughs> I mean, better late than never, right? <laughs> For the fourth and final episode of Spoopy Season this year, I'm going to do the long-awaited resin video. <laughs> I was saving the best for last, and today we are gonna keep it witchy with my craft kitsune box because the theme is witchy cauldrons. I'm so excited. Without further ado, let's open our box and see just how tiny these cauldron molds are because I think they're pretty small. <laughs> this is the mold. It is absolutely tiny. Uh, okay, let's look at this in a minute. I'm gonna set it aside. The other stuff we got are these adorable sprinkles. They're not food, don't eat them. I'm watching you, don't eat the sprinkles. They look delicious though. Let's see, I bet you these are made out of like polymer clay. So seriously, even if you tried to eat them, it wouldn't taste very good. So we got like orange, green, black, and purple sprinkles with little jack-o'-lantern cane slices. That's adorable. We got these little black cat cane slices which are super cute. And then we got orange, purple, and black with little purple eyeballs and these pearls. Oh, and stars. <gasps> oh my gosh. I love these sprinkles so much. We also got our UV resin and some black pearl pigment. I am really intrigued with this. Um, I wonder how well it like how opaque it makes the resin, because if that's the case, then I may not be able to do UV resin. I might have to do epoxy resin, because UV resin won't cure with black if it's too opaque. Ooh, these look like goodies. Ooh, I like this holographic, whoa. I like the holographic envelope. I'm a sucker for holographic. I'm a sucker for everything sparkly. I'm like, sparkle, ooh. We got these gorgeous embellishments. Oh my gosh. We got like a skeleton hand. It's a very strange looking skull. So we got these stickers here. Drink up, witches. Oh my gosh. I love that one. Tis the season to be spooky. Spoopy. To be spoopy. And we got our super glue. I don't need to take that out of the packaging. <laughs> Everyone knows what super glue looks like. And we got our booklet, which basically just goes over everything we already opened. And she usually gives detailed instructions on how to make the molds that she provides or makes the craft. And I love that she gives this code to scan so we can watch her video tutorial. That helps so much. And her tutorials are really, really well done and explain any kind of the nuances to molds or anything that might be confusing. She does a really good job of explaining. And I love this picture diagram, thank you. We didn't even look at the mold yet. Oh my gosh, this is tiny, itty bitty. If you're familiar with resin crafting, you know how big these are. And that's like the diameter of the cauldron. It is so tiny. Oh man, I'm so excited. <laughs> so I see that we can do, um, I think this one is supposed to be like flames or steam. This one is bubbles. This one will look like there's like a spoon. You've got mail. <laughs> Words. <laughs> Oh no, I'm so fried, I can't think of basic words. A spoon, stirring it, and then we got some handles. Here's a big handle option, so you could have little handles on the side, or you could have like a big handle. And then the cauldron itself. I'm so excited to make this! <gasps> Ooh. Okay, we have a lot of goodies here to make all of these cool cauldron options. I'm really excited to get started. And if this is a project that you think you would like to get your hands on, you can check out Craft Kitsune. I will put a link down below. And you can use a special code, BUNNYDIY, to get $5 off. 
I was really, really excited to get started, and I know I have a ton of resin supplies, so I got everything out that I could find that I thought would work for these cauldrons. So I got out my pearlescent powder, which was from the Ocean Box from Craft Kitsune. I also got out some alcohol inks, including some pearl alcohol inks. I got out my Hyper Hollow Flakes from Solar Color Dust as well as Solar Color Dust's Thermal Color Changing Liquid, which I'm really excited to use. They had sent me some samples from their sister company called Glitter Hippo. So I have Peach Glow, which glows in the dark, and also this bright green prickly pear Mylar Flakes glitter, which I'm really excited to use. I also got out my Glow in the Dark pigment, which was also from the Ocean Box. And then with this box, we have the stickers and the inclusions and embellishment kind of sprinkles and candy and some of these little gems. So for my first cauldron, I really wanted to test out the black pearl pigment that came in this month's box because I wasn't sure how much a pearl finish would show with black. So I mixed that in with UV resin and poured that into the mold. It was a little tricky to avoid bubbles, so I tapped the mold on the table several times to kind of get the bubbles to rise up to the top. When demolding, I was trying to be really, really careful because I could see it kind of stretching the silicone and it made me really nervous. Um, so I kind of did some squeezing and twisting motions to get it to pop off. And I love how this pearl pigment shows up. It is gorgeous. It's so sparkly. It's kind of subtle. So you get the black and then this subtle sparkle. I love it. I also used that same black pigment into the hinge system, and then I mixed some gold alcohol ink with some UV resin and poured that into the rings, and I cured all of that. Then I took some of Solar Color Dust Thermal Change Liquid and painted three super thick coats onto my cauldron. Now my black cauldron is all sparkly from the pearl pigment, but it also changes color with my body temperature, which looks so cool. I attached the gold rings and the little hinges to the cauldron with some UV resin. Liz suggested using super glue, but I always have a really hard time with super glue, so I just use UV resin instead. Then I added a large and small bead cap to the top of the cauldron and attached a screw eye pin with UV resin. Then I attached a hand and some of those golden red beads with UV resin as well. And I hung it from this black leather cord. I love how this cauldron came out. It looks so amazing. It looks like what I think the evil witch in Snow White, what her cauldron kind of looked like. And I think the reason why is because of the red beads reminds me of the apples, like the poison apple. And the bead caps at the top kind of look like a grate or black bubbles. It looks so amazing. And that black pearlescent is really pretty on this cauldron. It kind of gives it this like mysterious look. And then the fact that it changes color with my body temperature is even better. So I am going to wear it for the rest of this video, which is why I did it first, because I was really excited to wear it. Yes! Oh my gosh, look at how amazing this looks. What's really awesome is because it's round, it's going to kind of shift around a little bit as I wear it, which is going to show off that color change from my body temperature. <gasps> I'm so excited, I love it so much. I'm really excited to wear this to work. I think it'll look so good as kind of a little bit of a light Halloween costume, kind of witchy. Now it's time to use some of my gorgeous Hyper Hollow Flakes from Solar Color Dust. I started by mixing in a whole bunch with my UV resin and poured that into my cauldron mold. I also mixed up some pink alcohol ink and some lilac pearlescent powder to make the rings and the hinges. Then 
then I attached everything with UV resin. Now I want this to be a hair accessory, so I made this little Halloween themed bow off camera using some ribbon that I found at the dollar store. I want to attach the bow to this hair clip, so I sanded the hair clip first and then hot glued everything together. Now I also made this super cute little mouse out of polymer clay. It's a tiny little charm. I've never made a mouse before, so that's why I did it off camera because I wasn't sure how it was going to turn out or how long it was going to take me. <laughs> but I'm really, really proud of this little mouse. I think it's a little witch's familiar. And so it has a little star shape over its eye. And that's why it is kind of a purple and pink kind of themed mouse. I attached that to the cauldron with some UV resin. Now you guys remember all this purple tool from when I made my Madame Leota head because originally I was going to stuff her crystal ball with this purple tool. Well, instead I cut it into little strips and I stuffed it into this cauldron behind the mouse with some hot glue. So it kind of looks like a uh, foam or smoke coming out of this cauldron. Then for a final touch, I took a little tail that I made out of polymer clay and hot glued that to the side of the cauldron as well. And then attached the cauldron to my bow with some hot glue. What I love about this ribbon is it has wiring on the side so I can make the bow as fluffy as I want or as flat as I want. So that really helps to add kind of dimension depending on where I put it. And I think I am going to put it right on the side. This is why I did this one second because I was really excited to wear it. Oh my gosh. Look at how stinking cute this bow is. Oh, I am so excited to wear this to work. Ooh, ah! Oh my gosh, I love it. Look at how gorgeous it is. It is so cute. I love this bow so much. If you're like me and you always wished you could do a little bit of magic to make your life easier, then you would fit right in with the Coffee Bean family. You can subscribe to become a Coffee Bean too and click that notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos. That way you won't lose me to the big wide world of YouTube. It's huge and you'll probably lose me. <laughs> I upload videos every Monday at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Now, my final two pieces are going to be keychains because my daughter loves to sneak into my craft room, grab the things I make, play with them and then they just mysteriously disappear. So I figured why not make her some keychains that make noise, are entertaining, and she can just keep them and put them on her backpacks or her purse or whatever she wants. So to start I mixed up some of my blue pearl alcohol ink and mixed that into UV resin and poured that into the cauldron mold. I also poured it into the big handle. Then I mixed up some of my prickly pear glitter from Glitter Hippo with the glow pigment from the Ocean Craft Kitsune box. And I poured that into the kind of swirly mold shape. Next, I added some of the included stickers because I saw the Drink Up Witches and thought it was hilarious, even though this is for my daughter and she's obviously underage. Drink Up Chocolate Milk. <laughs> That's what it is. Drink Up for Mom. Drink Up for Chocolate Milk for her. <laughs> These stickers were really hard to peel, and I know I have seen some other craft kitsunes who were having issues with the stickers as well, so just go really, really slow. I kind of used my thumb and a popsicle stick to kind of get it started. Once you get it started, go super slow because I kept ripping mine. So I attached Drink Up Witches on one side, and then I also attached a little witch and a little black cat on the other. And I thought it would be really fun for this to be a dry shaker so that rattle sound is really loud. So I poured in a bunch of the different size pearls inside and then attached the green swirl with some UV resin. 
Then I put in some screw eye pins on the side and attached the big blue handle with some jump rings. Then I added a bigger eye pin to the top with a jump ring so that I could attach it to my key ring. Then I thought it would be really pretty to add some of these pearls to the top of the cauldron with some UV resin. This way it kind of looks like it's bubbling out and kind of spilling over. I love this keychain so much. Plus I love that the top of it glows in the dark. So this will look really good on a bag or a backpack for when kids are walking to and from school. That glow in the dark helps a lot. Also for trick or treating, this would be perfect to attach to their costume or to their trick or treat bag and it glows for a really long time. For my second keychain, which is my favorite piece of all of my pieces, yes, even more so than my bow or my necklace, it is hard for me to give up to my daughter. I am making a candy themed cauldron. So I got started by mixing my clear UV resin with the glow pigment. And I also mixed up my pink pearl alcohol ink and poured that into the big handle. Then I wanted to use the part of the mold that looks like bubbles for the top of the cauldron and I noticed that there's a spot that looks like it's for a spoon or like a handle of a spoon. So I cut a toothpick into a smaller size and fit that in with some UV resin. Then I mixed up some peach glow with the UV resin and poured that for the bubbles. Next, I added some stickers to the side of the cauldron. I did Trick or Treat and Happy Halloween. And the glow pigment for the clear UV resin kind of gave it a little bit of a cloudy look. It's not clear or see-through as much as I would like it to be. So I decided to fill it with these candy embellishments that are like a bright green, bright orange, bright purple, because that does show through the cauldron sides. And it kind of makes sense that the cauldron wouldn't be clear anyway. Like what, is it a glass cauldron? That doesn't make sense. So I kind of like how this looks, even though it didn't turn out clear like I initially wanted it to. Then I attached the peach glow bubbles to the top of the cauldron with some UV resin. Then I attached the pink handle the same way as I did before by adding little screw eye pins to the side and some jump rings. Also, I screwed in a smaller eye pin to the top of the bubbles, attached a jump ring, and then attached that to a keychain. And finally, I thought it would be really cute if it looked like the candy was kind of spilling out of the bubbles or out of the cauldron. So I attached big clumps of candy to the sides with UV resin. I love this one so much. It's definitely my favorite. These colors are completely my aesthetic. They're like the bright neon glow in the dark. Plus it's candy. I cannot say no to candy. I love candy so much. I have the worst sweet tooth. I call them sweet teeth. Like I don't have one sweet tooth. I have sweet teeth. So even though I made this for my daughter, it's going to be really hard to give it up. I really want to attach it to my purse. You know what? I might just attach it to my purse anyway, and she probably won't even notice. <laughs> for this year's spoopy season and I had an absolute blast. I hope you guys enjoyed all of the videos too. And if you'd like, you can go check out season one. I have a whole other playlist from last year's spoopy season. And in a couple of weeks, I'm going to combine 
both playlists into one master playlist. So that'll make it a little bit easier for you guys to watch too. And I just unlocked the community tab on YouTube, which means I can post behind the scenes pictures, behind the scenes videos, and polls for you guys to do if you're subscribed. So if you'd like to see some behind the scenes stuff, make sure you subscribe. And you can click the little bell to get notified of when I post. I upload videos every Monday at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Later today, I'm gonna post a poll on the community tab asking you which spoopy season episode was your favorite. Thanks so much for watching everyone! Love you a latte!